how to create a website with WordPress in under 20 minutes. That's what we're going to do in this video. What's up everybody? My name is David, WebsiteCreatePro.com. So I thought I would switch up today and create a much shorter video than my long form tutorials about basically what do you need to know when creating a website? What is the essential need to know information? And that's what I hope to accomplish in this video. So we're basically going, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a website with WordPress as fast as possible without skipping any like really essential steps. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so the steps involved with creating a website with WordPress are very simple. So number one is that we have to get a domain name at a domain name registrar. Then the next step is we have to get a hosting account then the next step after that is to set up name service and then the next step after that is to basically install WordPress and set up a few back-end settings which I'm going to show you so let's get to it okay so get your domain name so where to get your domain name I recommend Namecheap because they are a domain name registered now you'll see a lot of other tutorials on YouTube and everybody's like oh free domain name on Bluehost or free domain name with HostGator or free domain name free is not free guys uh, free is free for the first year and then you have to pay an inflated price that basically makes up for the difference of it being free for the first year so it's not really free uh, that's why I recommend a domain name register now you have a lot of options to choose from with a domain name register. I have other videos on this channel that you can check out about what domain name registers I like, but I personally use Namecheap, so I use Namecheap and I recommend Namecheap. And so let's jump into Namecheap and I'll show you how to register your domain name right now. Welcome to Namecheap.com. So to get started, it's very easy. Just go to the search box and type in the domain name that you would like to register. So I'm going to type in my super amazing blog dot com okay and i strongly recommend going for dot com and so let's click the search icon and then on the next page namecheap will tell us if this item is available to register or not okay so our domain name is currently available to register at 888 a year and we'll go ahead and add to carts and now we'll click on view item and that's it so let's go and proceed to checkout and right now we have our domain name. You can register a domain name for up to nine years in advance. I would definitely recommend registering for two or three years. Leave auto renew off when it's time to renew your domain name. Namecheap will email your uh, basically the email that you use to set up your account. You get who is guard for free forever and who is guard protects your private information and simply click on this big red button that says confirm order. You'll need to create a Namecheap account. It's not complicated and that is it that's how you register your domain name at namecheap okay so you have your domain name and now it's time to get a hosting account and again like you have a lot of different options with a web host uh, but what we want is a shared hosting account because we have a brand new website we don't have any content we don't have any traffic so we don't need some big complicated hosting plan nor do we need to be spending a lot of money on a web host now I personally recommend Bluehost for new websites because they are the number one recommended web host by WordPress for a reason they have great customer service they have a good web hosting service like your site will load quickly and it's just designed for beginners and it's a, just a good overall experience if this is your first time creating a website uh, basically they're like the safe choice they're like the coca-cola i would describe of like web hosts they're not like oh they're amazing or oh, they're bad they're just like a good solid choice and so what basically is web hosting web hosting is just the uh, computer that's on 24 7 that allows your website to be available to the world 24 7 because uh, back in the day when people used to host their website like on their laptop or their home computer if they they turn their computer off <laughs> their website wouldn't be available this is like 30 years ago and so that's basically like why web hosting developed as a service because people need and companies need uh, a, a basically a computer that's on 24 7 that can handle traffic and requests and all that good stuff and a, a place to store all your information like your videos and pictures and all the content you're going to be publishing. So anyways, let's get a hosting account with Bluehost right now. Welcome to Bluehost.com. So Bluehost is actually the number one recommended web host from WordPress. They're an excellent shared web hosting for starting your first website. Now to get started with this is just go to hosting and then you wanna to navigate to shared hosting. Now, when you're on the shared hosting page, you have a few different options. You have basic plus, choice plus, and pro. Basic, you can only have a single website, so I highly recommend not getting basic. I personally like plus and choice plus. 
plus has enough resources to basically to kind of allow your website to get to like a thousand visitors a day, maybe 30,000 page views. Choice Plus allows you maybe more like 1,500 and around like 50,000 page views, a good medium sized website. And so I definitely recommend getting the Choice Plus just because the introduction rate is the same as Plus and you get a lot more in terms of like resources. So go ahead and click on select. Now on this page, you wanna use a domain name that you own because you just registered your domain name at Namecheap. You do not want to create a new domain because that's going to register your domain through Bluehost. And I don't recommend that because it's just more expensive. So anyways, type in your domain name that you registered at Namecheap. So I'll type in my super amazing blog and click on next. Okay, so next we have account information. This is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence, just fill out your account information like you would anything else. Now here is where it's a little bit more important. You get a massive discount the longer you register in advance. I personally would at least recommend like a two year plan because it usually takes about two years to really grow your website to get to a decent traffic level. And then you can reevaluate your project. So two years is a good length of time, but three years is also nice too because it's not that much more expensive and you get uh, three years of hosting for just a little bit more money. So it's really up to you. Then as we come down here, we don't need the defend against attacks and just submit your payment information. And then I have read and agreed to Bluehost's terms of service, cancellation policy, et cetera, and then click submit. And then you'll be guided through an onboarding process. Welcome to Bluehost.com. So this is the dashboard for Bluehost.com. Now the next step that we need to do is set up the name servers because your domain's probably not looking like this. It's looking like probably like something like temporary box, something, something. The reason is because you have to set up name servers. So let's get to that next. So you have your domain name, you have your hosting account. How do you actually connect it to? It's a very quick and easy process. Basically, you have to go into your domain name registrar and set up the name servers to be pointing to your hosting account. Sounds complicated. It's actually something that just takes like five minutes. It's a quick copy paste job. And I'm gonna show you how it's done right now. Setting name servers is quick and easy. So this is the welcome email from Bluehost. Now all web hosts are the same in that they send a welcome email to your email upon purchase. So right now when you're in Bluehost, you're probably looking at something like this where it says box something, something, something. The reason is because you haven't set your name servers. So find your welcome email from Bluehost and right here it says name servers and these are, this is it, NS, NS1 and NS2 Bluehost. Now what we need to do is we need to take this and go to Namecheap. Now you want to click on domain list and then you want to go to manage for the specific domain name that you want to edit. Then scroll down here and go to name servers. Right now for you, it probably says name cheap basic DNS. You wanna go ahead and just click on custom DNS. Next, you just have to input the name servers, literally. So NS1, Bluehost, and NS2, Bluehost. And then that's it. And once you're done with that, click this little green check mark. And then it will say changes to your uh, DNS settings can take up to 48 hours to take effect. Personally, this normally takes about 20 minutes or so. It doesn't take that long, but that's it. That's how you set up name servers for Bluehost and Namecheap. So we have our domain name, we have our hosting account, we have name servers set up. We are good to go. The next step is just to install WordPress. It's very quick and easy, and you're going to be quite surprised by how just simple it is to install WordPress. So let's get it done. Let's install Bluehost on our domain. So to get started, just go to my sites and one on here, you want to go and click on the blue button that says create site. And then enter a site name and a site tagline. So the site name and site tagline, both of these can be edited later once you're logged into WordPress. So don't stress over this too much. I'm just gonna put in my name because I'm using my name as my domain name. And then I'll just type in something like hello world, whatever. Now what's more important is to click on this advanced tab. Now the email address, you can put in the email address or you can use the one that you used buying your web posting account up to you. Basically, this is going to be your recovery email address. Now, I highly recommend you set a WordPress admin username and admin password. Otherwise, Bluehost is just going to generate a random username and a random password for you. And so I'd rather just set it myself. So I'll just type in admin one, two, three, and then I'll just set the password myself so I can know, well, know what it is and log into my account with ease. Click on next. Now right here, we can unselect these plugins because we don't need them. And we want to install WordPress on the root domain name. So just click on next. 
and WordPress will begin the installation process. Okay, WordPress has successfully been installed. So to log in, you can just click this button right here that says log into WordPress. Now, one thing to remember is that you want to go to wp-admin in order to log into your website from this point onward. Okay, so this would be a backward backend uh, thing to log in and just use your username and password. So let's check out our website. Okay, so welcome to WordPress. Welcome to WordPress. So you have successfully installed WordPress and now the next step is basically to do a little bit of backend customization. I'm gonna walk you through what I recommend you change and do. I'm also gonna introduce you various themes, plugins, how to add themes, how to add plugins, uh, what themes do I recommend, what plugins do I recommend, and various other like little settings that maybe you wouldn't know about. Uh, so if you're ready, let's get to it right now. Okay, so some backend settings to take care of with your new brand new WordPress powered website or blog. Let's get to it. So first thing we want to do is we want to navigate over to settings and then you want to go down where it says permalinks. Now we're going to set the permalinks and I highly recommend that you click on post name, then click on custom structure and go ahead and add in slash blog. So that means all your blog posts will be structured in our blog slash post name. Now, most recommend using post name, but I personally like using this custom structure. It's what I personally use and I've found it to be the most effective URL structure because it gives the site a nice structure. Now, month and date is uh, only good for news oriented websites or any website that's publishing time sensitive content and post name is good, but it's more ideal for smaller websites. They're only going to be like 15, 20, maybe 30 pages. If you're going to be building a big website, you definitely want to consider structuring under blog slash uh, post name. And so anyways, whatever you decide to do, I recommend post name or my own custom structure. Totally up to you. It's your website, but go ahead and click on save changes. Okay, so next we want to navigate over to users and open users in a new tab. Now the users for our account, we're going to have one user, which is our administrator account. We don't want to publish content as the administrator, just in case anyone was ever to break into our site, or etc. Worst case scenario, because if they break in as the administrator, uh, they have full access to the site. So instead, we want to publish content as a uh, editor. So to get started with that, you just go to add new. And then under add new, we have to create a new username, email, first name, last name, etc. So go ahead and just create uh, any username. So I'll just call this admin two. You have to use a different email. So just go ahead and do that. You don't need to enter a first name or a last name. And then you can show the password or you can hide it, whatever. So just make sure it's a password that you can remember and then send user notification. We don't need to do that. And we want to make this account an editor account. And this is the account we will use to publish content. And so just click on add new user. And now we are good to go. So when you're under your blog posts and you're creating new content. So if we so for example, if we click on add a new make sure your post is published under the editor account. So I'll just show you quickly how to do that. Okay, so right over here under document under author, we want to change it to basically the editor account for me that was admin two that I just created. And that is it. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is install some essential plugins. So to get started with that, we want to navigate over here to where it says plugins. Now plugins are programs that add additional features on top of your WordPress installation. So right now with Bluehost, we get this one that says Bluehost right here. We can go ahead and click on deactivate for that. And then that will turn into Mojo Marketplace. So go ahead and select that and select Hello Dolly and go to delete. We do not need these plugins installed on our site. Okay, now let's click that. Now the plugins that we want to install are go to add a new. And the very first one is the Yoast Yoast SEO plugin because this will give you a little bit more control over your blog post, meta description and data and page titles. So go ahead and click on install. And then once it's installed, click on activate. And now what this specifically does, if we take a look at a blog post, let's go into the hello world blog post. What Yoast allows us to do is it gives us control over how our piece of content is going to appear in these search engines right here. So this is what Yoast is very helpful with doing where we can edit the snippet and we can set the page title. Okay. And so that's why you want to install Yoast. Now the next plugin we want to install is smush it. So type in smush it. Okay. And then click on install. 
and activate it. Now what Smush it does is it compresses all images to maintain quality, but it reduces the size so your website loads more quickly. And then the last plugin that we want to install is the W3 Total Cache plugin. So again, go to add new and search for something called W3 Total Cache. Okay, and then click on install and activate. Okay, so W3 Total Cache has installed and right out of the box, it works as correct. It doesn't need any customization for a shared hosting account. And that is it. Okay, so let's wrap this up. So under appearance themes, you'll have different themes for WordPress. To add a new theme for WordPress, you simply click this button that says add new. And on this page, you can either search for a theme via the WordPress database or you can upload a theme. Now you would want to upload a theme if you bought a premium theme and then you just want to upload it to your site. That's how you would do it. Or here you can just search for the most popular themes. Now, one little thing to take care of is to go back into themes and make sure to delete any themes that are not in use. At all times, you only want to have one theme installed for security reasons. Now let's navigate over to our blog post. Well, with the blog post, you have a lot of different options over here. So this is basically the text area where you can start creating text. Now Gutenberg uses a specific block editor and it's really nice. And so let me just show you some different things that you could do. So for example, we can take this uh, dummy text right here and you click on this and then you can make it into a heading. Now with heading, you have H234 tags. So basically the way a website page should be structured is that this is your H1 tag. Then you should have H2. All of these subheadings right here should be H2. Now H3 is for a subheading within H2 paragraph, okay? And then you can always click on this little information icon right there, which will tell you the structure of your site if it makes sense. So for example, if I was just to change this to H3, for example, and I click on this, it's going to come up yellow because it's telling me like, hey, this is incorrect. Like the title is H1. This needs to be H2. If that makes sense. So there's a hierarchical order to how the web page should be structured. And that is pretty much it. And so right over here, you have a bunch of different blocks that you can play around with. You have common blocks like paragraph, heading, list, cover, image, quote. Then you can keep going formatting boxes. You can try layout elements and widgets, embeds, and so forth. And there's lots of helpful plugins that add uh, additional functionality to your content editor. So one that I really like is called the Stackable uh, plugin. This is one of my favorite plugins for uh, WordPress, for the WordPress editor. But again, this one's optional, but this one just adds nice looking uh, editing blocks. Now, if we actually take a look at these specific blog posts, uh, you're going to see that it says by admin too. you you're going to be like, how do I change that? So again, you have to go into your users, then you have to go to where it says admin and then click on edit. And now right here is where you can display name publicly as so nickname and I can just give it a nickname like David and then display my name publicly as David, for example, and then click update user. Now, if you're wondering where is this picture being generated from, that's being generated from a service called Gravatar. So Gravatar is a service where you can just link your uh, picture to an email at all times. And that is basically how that works right there with this. And so that is it. So now if we come here and we reload the page, it should update it correctly. Okay, now it's saying by David and that's looking great. Now, one last little thing is the category at the top right there. Right now we have uncategorized. Now with your website, you have the option to uh, basically put all blog posts in categories to add new categories. You click add new and then you can just type in the category that you want. Now your category should be one to three words. It should be something related to like what your website is about. So if your website's about sports, for example, it should be about like basketball would be a category, something like that. And you don't want to overdo it. You know, like start with like three or four categories fill up those three or four categories, like 10 blog posts, and that is it. And then the last little thing that you need to know is the feature image function right here. And this allows you to add a feature image per blog post. And the reason that is important is because feature images get associated with blog posts. So if we just take a look at websitecreatorpro.com and go to the blog, 
all of these are feature images. And the way I have it set up on my site is that the feature image shows here on the blog. And this would also show up in the search engine if it's taken as a rich snippet. But on the actual blog post itself, you don't see anything. And that's basically how I like to structure it. But again, it's your website. So that's up to you. And that's basically how you would use a feature image. So basically that is it for how to structure a blog post. All right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial video, consider subscribing, hit that like button. My name is David, WebsiteCreditPro.com. I'll see you next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.